uh, back with you again, albeit virtually at Bracknell Gospel Hall. Thank you for your very warm welcome. And hopefully you can see the first slide on my screen, which some of the younger ones, the old ones, I hope, on the call this evening will recognise. It's a Bible. And I want to start this evening by saying this to you. Whoever you are, whatever background you come, and I'm conscious that I may be speaking to some of you this evening. I have a great Bible knowledge, possibly a, a greater knowledge of the Bible than myself. And then there'll be some on the call this evening who don't have any knowledge of what the Bible teaches. I want to tell you this evening that the Bible is God's word. The God of heaven has written the Bible for our understanding. And you see, the Bible is as relevant today for us as when it was written over the last two to four thousand to six thousand years or so and there are many wonderful things that the bible tells us and i want to tell you that the god of heaven the god of the bible is a god of communication and he has revealed himself to us through the bible and the bible tells us many great things you know it tells us about the creation of this world it tells us how god created man and woman. It tells us about how disobedience and sin came into the world. But more importantly, it tells us not just about the future events that are going to happen in this world. It tells us about the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the most important message that I want to share with you this evening, the message of good news, the message of God's good news, the message of the gospel. And I wonder, as I see some of the younger ones on the call this evening, I'm going to speak on three separate points tonight, and here they are. God's message, God's plan, and God's warning to you personally. There we are. God's message, God's plan, and God's warning to you personally. And I wonder, younger ones, if you can remember those three points at the end of this meeting. Perhaps if you go and tell your mum and dad, there might be a treat before you go to bed. You never know. So I would be doing you a disservice tonight if I wasn't to tell you also, you see, the Bible, yes, it has good news. But before I can tell you the good news, I need to tell you about the bad news or the unpopular news. You see, please listen carefully when I say this. This is the bad news of the Bible. We are all sinners before God. I want to repeat that. We are all sinners before God. Well, why do I say that? Just hold that thought for a moment. The God of the Bible, as I've mentioned already, is the creator of this world. He is the giver of life and every breath that we have. And the Bible tells us that the God of heaven, the God of the Bible, is perfect. He is without sin. And I could turn to the first chapter of the Bible this evening, the book of Genesis, chapter one. And twice God would tell us that God has created man in his own image and in his own likeness. And when we think of a sinner, we may think of someone who is immoral, someone who is evil, wicked or corrupt. But I want to tell you that the true meaning of sinner means you missing the mark of God's perfect standard. And there's a wonderful illustration I heard many years ago. And I wonder if any of you have ever played archery before. I quite enjoy playing it. I'm not particularly good at it, to be completely honest with you. But there's been a few times where I stood with the archery board in front of me. I've got the bow and I've got the arrow and I fired it and I've missed the target. And that is what the Bible means by a sinner. Someone who has missed the mark, missed the perfect standard of God. Because the Bible tells us all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But importantly, a sinner, it describes the broken state of our relationship with God due to sin. We are all separated from God because of our sin. And the Bible uses a word lost. We are lost in, before the presence of God because of our sin. And you see, you may ask me, what, what do you mean by sin? So I said, God's standard is that of perfection. And when I talk about sin, I'm talking about that unkind word that you may have said about somebody, that inappropriate thought that you may have had, or taking something that may not belong to you. It's anything 
that offends the character of God. And you may be sitting there thinking to yourself this evening, well, I'm not as bad as my friend across the road. He's, he commits worse sin than me. Let me tell you this. If you haven't come to the point in your life of trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal saviour, you are disobeying the Bible and what God says in his word. And you, my dear friend, remain in your sin this evening. And as sinners, you see, you personally are under the judgment of God and the judgment of God on your sin. It will lead you to destruction and lead you to the place which the Bible calls hell and ultimately eternal suffering in the lake of fire. But if this news isn't bad enough, let me tell you, there's nothing that you can do in your own effort to make yourself accepted before God, to make yourself to save you from the judgment of God upon your sin, eternal punishment. You know, before God this evening, I have to be honest and say that you and I are deserving of nothing from God. But how I would be doing you a disservice this evening if I was to simply finish my message there and sign off. But that's not it. I'm so pleased this evening that even though the Bible tells us, yes, there is a gap between us and God because of our sin. I can tell you that there is good news this evening. And that is the good news of what the Bible teaches. God's message, and here it is, it's found in Romans chapter one and verse 16. And there's a man who, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was named Paul and he wrote these words to Christians at a place called Rome in Italy. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Romans chapter one and verse 16. Herein then is God's message from the Bible this evening. And I want to tell you that God has provided a way of escape from your lost sinful condition. And the Bible uses the word that I've underlined here on this slide, the word salvation, deliverance, escape from the judgment of your sin. And let me be really clear, when we talk about the power of God, God has chosen the message of the gospel, which we'll think about this evening, the message of good news as his message that men, women and children may be brought to a position of understanding that they are a sinner before God and need forgiveness to know, the, uh, uh, to know their sin forgiven and eternal life in heaven. We've mentioned it, but there is a gap between sinners and God. And let me be clear, that gap can only be bridged through God's act of redemption in Christ. And how often we hear big words like this mentioned and not explained as they should be. The act of redemption in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this, as, sin, as sinners, we are slaves to sin. But you may say, well, that's a, that's a funny thing to say. But let me tell you, the Bible says it. I don't say it on my own authority. The Bible says, because we are sinners, we are under the power of sin. We are enchained by sin, as it were. And the only way that our freedom from sin can be purchased, let me tell you, it was through the coming into the world of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when there was a man in the Bible called John, he wrote these words, the father sent the son to be the savior of the world and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ upon a wooden cross at Calvary was the price that was paid to make our deliverance from sin possible. And that's the basic meaning of redemption. It's buying back something that is lost and we're lost before God. And the good news is that through the death of the Lord Jesus on the cross, God has provided a way this evening that we can be brought back into a right relationship with God. And I'm so grateful this evening that the price has been paid for the forgiveness of my sin. And I want to tell you this evening, if you're a believer in Christ, isn't it a wonderful thing to be saved? Isn't it a wonderful thing to know the joy and peace of God's salvation? But you see, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, that wasn't the end because the Bible tells us three days after he died, 
God raised him from the dead. It, the Bible uses the word resurrection. The Lord Jesus Christ came back to life. And why is that important? Well, the resurrection of Christ, it proved with full evidence that God's word, the Bible, is fully trustworthy because God said that he would raise his son on the third day. The Lord Jesus, when he walked through this well before he died, said on the third day, I will rise again. And when he rose uh, from the dead, he rose over he, he, he proved that he was the son of God and he proved that he had power over life and death. And let me be clear, because the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead, you and I this evening through faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ can receive the gift of God, which is eternal life in heaven. Why? Because Christ rose from the dead. He's provided eternal life that is available to you and I. And the message of good news, the gospel, yes, it provides deliverance from the slavery of sin. It provides escape from, escape from punishment, and it provides the acceptance before God that you and I require to be delivered from our judgments. And you see, my second point then really is this, and I want to be simple this evening. I don't want to make this message too confusing because the message of good news is a simple message, and this is God's plan for us. And here we have it, Ephesians chapter two and verse eight. And this is a man in the Bible named Paul. Now he was writing to Christians, those who had believed and accepted Jesus Christ as their savior from sin. And he writes and says this, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, here we have in God's word, the perfect plan of salvation, the perfect plan of God's salvation. And God's perfect plan then, it is by grace. And what do I mean by that? Well, Please understand from these verses that we've just read. Grace means undeserved kindness of God shown towards you and I. And you may say, well, well, why is that? Let me be clear. The God of heaven, the God of the Bible, your creator is a God of love. Even though you and I have broken our relationship with God through sin, God is a God of love and he's demonstrated or shown his love to you and I through the sending into the world of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see in these verses here on the screen, God presents the most simple plan of salvation for you personally in the Bible. And the plan of salvation, look at it closely. It is by grace through faith in the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And salvation from sin, you see, it really is given by the grace of God. And the grace of God is a gift to you and I. It's an undeserved gift given. And God gives and provides salvation for you and I. Because God is, yes, he's a God of love. And God wants to show his kindness to you and I. And we, are, we can be the receivers of that kindness this evening. If we but by faith take God at his word and accept the Lord Jesus as our personal saviour. And let me give you an example of grace. Just imagine after this call that I got a phone call from Josh and he phoned me up and he said to me, Daniel, he said, I want to give you a sum of money to pay off the mortgage on your house. Not just would I be very surprised, but... I would think to myself, well, why would he be paying my mortgage off when I don't deserve any kindness from Josh? You see, Josh wouldn't expect anything in return. He would be simply showing me kindness because he was showing love towards me. And you see, that is the very idea of grace, isn't it, this evening? God provides grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not that he expects anything back from us, no but because he loves 
us. The grace of God, it knows no boundaries. It's given as a free gift to the receiver. And the gift of salvation given to you and I as sinners, it cost us nothing. But the price of such a gift, it came, didn't it, at a great cost through the Lord Jesus Christ who died in our place. But I want to be honest as well this evening. It's good to be honest before God. You don't deserve salvation. I don't deserve salvation. God gives us what we don't deserve. And that is true grace. God's grace offered to you through Jesus Christ on the cross. Grace and love has been demonstrated through the cross at Calvary. And I want to tell you about the cross work of the Lord Jesus Christ for just a few minutes. Only somebody who was without sin, only somebody who was perfect before God could be good enough to pay the price that our sin demanded before God. And when the Lord Jesus came into the world, the Bible tells us he had no sin. And the only acceptable sacrifice for sin could be that which was perfect. And the Lord Jesus Christ was without sin and he was perfect before God. And we thought about redemption very briefly, haven't we? And, you know, when the Bible speaks about redemption, we must understand redemption means a price had to be paid. And when the Lord Jesus Christ died, he bled from his body and the blood demonstrated a price had been paid for our sin. If we were to turn back to the Old Testament this evening, the Bible would tell us about many animals that were killed and blood was shed that the people may have their sins forgiven, but lay hold of this. The Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, according, here we are, to the riches of his grace. Jesus' death was a substitutionary death. And what do I mean by that? Another great word in the Bible. It means the Lord Jesus went to the cross and he was nailed to the cross in my place and your place. He took our place in death. How do I know that? Well, the Bible tells me. You see, the Bible says this, that God has made him to be sin for us. He that knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness or right with God through him. The innocent for the guilty, the perfect for the sinful. And let me, my dear friend, don't ever let me underestimate the sufferings of Christ at the cross of Calvary this evening. None, none of us can truly enter into how much suffering, how much agony, how much shame was placed upon the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he may pay the price for my forgiveness from sin. Jesus' substitutionary death meant, means that we need never experience eternal separation from God in hell. And I tell you, with every effort of my heart, we will never truly be able to understand how much Christ suffered in our place. And from the cross, God is saying to the world, I love you. Well, I go to the world today and I speak to some of my work colleagues and they say to me, well, Jesus died for the sins of mankind. He died for the sins of the world. I say, that's right. And they say, well, that surely means we'll all get to heaven. And I have to tell you, as I tell them, that is not what the Bible teaches. That is incorrect. The substitutionary death, the Lord Jesus taking my place on the cross it must be personally applied to my life. And how can that be done? Well, it's accepting and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. And that's what this verse says upon our screen. And faith means you take your place as a lost sinner. You accept God's substitute. And in faith and full trust, turn from your sin towards God, that which the Bible calls repentance. And like a man in the Bible, can, you can truly say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. You see, faith, it's trusting in somebody outside of yourself. And it's a full trust that when the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and bore the judgment of your sin, that was good enough and sufficient that you may be forgiven. But don't let me don't don't be misunderstood this evening. Faith is not a good work that God rewards. It is casting your unworthy selves 
on a forgiving God. And in these little verses on the screen here, we read, not of works, lest any man should boast. Let me tell you, there is nothing you can do to earn your forgiveness before God this evening. However many good works you try and do, it will never make you accepted before God. Salvation is a gift of God by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible particularly says there, a person is saved by faith in Christ. It's not by works. And why is this? I'm thankful to God because if we could save ourselves, we are sinful. We would be boastful human beings and we cannot boast in anything other than the death of Jesus Christ for my sin and for your sin. So we come on to our final point. We thought about God's message. We thought about God's plan. And let us think about next then, because time has almost gone. God's warning for you. And here we have God's warning for you. And there was a man in the Bible named Peter. He was a follower of the Lord Jesus. And I can often relate to Peter. He had a lion heart and he stood before the uh, people of Israel, the Jewish people. And he says this, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none of a name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And when you lay hold of that this evening, we must be saved. What are you relying on for your salvation? Are you relying on the good things you've done? Or do you recognize that there's nothing that you can do in your own effort, but simply cast yourself upon the grace of God. And I love that hymn we sung at the start of our time together. Wonderful grace that gives to me what I don't deserve. And none of us are deserving this evening, are we? And when we look upon this beautiful verse from the Bible upon our screen, this is God's advice to you. You know, we thought about grace and the Bible says, that the days which we're living in now is the day of grace. And that means that God's kindness has been extended to you and I. But let me be clear, there's gonna be a moment when the day of grace will end. And the next great event to happen in the Bible is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to the air to take all those who have believed and trusted in him for salvation home to heaven. And God's day of grace will end. And I want to, just make a solemn point. Nobody, not one of us knows how much time we have left in this life. There could be a moment when we could pass from time into eternity. And somebody once said this, there is no other way of salvation except through the cross of Christ. Lay hold of that this evening. I want to urge you, as we thought very simply about God's message we thought about God's perfect plan. And it is perfect because the plan was made by God and God is perfect. And we thought about God's warning. And this is God's warning for you personally. Get serious. Now is the time for your salvation. And is your heart so hardened that it can only turn away and reject God's grace and offer of salvation? You, my friend, can have sin forgiven. You can know the joy and peace with God that comes in believing and that's now that you can have it just where you are by true trust to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ you can come to the cross by faith and receive straight away that gift of eternal life won't you come by faith to him and I just want to close please with a very real illustration a number of years ago when I worked dare I say it at HMRC there was a man that I worked with and he wasn't a Christian. He didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But over a number of months, I used to sit with him at lunchtime when I read my Bible when I was on lunch. And he used to sit next to me and I used to just read some of the verses to him. And over a matter of weeks, he got an interest and I was able to pass on a Bible to him. He promised me he would read it. And I would see him from time to time and I would say to him, are you saved? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? He didn't answer me. He only smiled and walked away. The very next day um, that I saw, that, 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 the day after that I saw him, there was an email that came round to staff to say that the road outside had been closed because a pedestrian had been struck by a car. Little did I know that that person 
was the man that I'd spoken to the previous day. He died on his way to hospital and he passed from time into eternity. I want to end with that solemn point. While the voice of Jesus calls you, be in time. God's message, God's plan, God's warning for you personally. Shall we just end in prayer?